World Affairs Council is uh, very pleased to uh, provide this opportunity for you to hear from the ambassador of Uzbekistan and to learn a little about uh, Uzbekistan because there's a lot to learn. Uzbekistan is doing terrific things. But before I do that, let me uh, just uh, recognize uh, some of our strategic partners. The International Trade Center makes this venue available, and we want to thank them. Uh, and um, we also, uh, you should know, uh, we film these for our YouTube channel, and they'll be available within 24 hours. Um, I need to get these uh, pages in order because uh, Stephanie did a nice job of putting these notes together. So uh, we want to welcome to the podium in a moment uh, His Excellency uh, Javlan Vakhavov. Uh, he's the ambassador uh, of Uzbekistan to the United States. Um, he. Uh, He's had a tremendous responsibility because Uzbekistan is just transforming so rapidly. So he's, uh, he's educating, he's promoting, uh, and uh, uh, he's getting all over the country. I don't know how many of you know the fact that you're here. It indicates you may be aware that Uzbekistan has a unique and very rich culture. It's been influenced throughout its history by so many empires, really, and uh, various powers that went through its territory because it's strategically located, geostrategically located, right in the heart of Central Asia. And of course, they fought over that territory. It was valuable territory in terms of natural resources. It's become a very populous area. The Persians, the Macedonian Greeks, Mongols, the Soviets, and Russians have all passed through the area, and they've left their marks on the culture and its people. So it's quite a, uh, uh, a diverse culture, a heterogeneous culture, if you will, and, and I find it to be a very advanced one, very well-educated uh, population. Uzbekistan also possesses key natural resources, and its economy is growing uh, very fast. On September 1st, Uzbekistan marked its 27th anniversary of gaining independence from the Soviet Union. His Excellency, uh, Shevlon Vahavov, has, am I pronouncing that correctly now? Because we don't use, we don't, uh, accent the K, although people invariably do when they read your name. But um, uh, the, since he was appointed as ambassador of Uzbekistan to the United States on November 29th of last year, uh, he's made uh, just a tremendous mark in, in, in terms of introducing his country to the American people. Now, M Ambassador Vahabov has been a member of the Uzbekistan Ministry of Foreign Affairs since 2001. He served in any number of different positions. He was appointed to the Uzbek National Security Council, initially as a consultant, and uh, ultimately became the lead uh, uh, consultant to the country. Um, I could say a, a, great, uh, a great deal about him, but uh, I'm gonna leave that for Ambassador Laura Kennedy. Laura Kennedy is another person I could say a great deal about. Uh, she's also a member of our board of directors. Uh, and she chairs our International Affairs Committee. Ambassador Kennedy is a career foreign service officer, has been for almost 40 years, even though she certainly doesn't look it, but she's served in numerous postings related particularly to Central Asia and Europe. Uh, she's had an, uh, a, a special interest in nuclear energy and disarmament. Uh, her experience in Central Asia dates back to 1978 when she served uh, she was an intern, I think, at that time, but she served an official the U.S. Ex exchange exhibit in the Soviet Union, because it was the Soviet Union then, and she lived in Tajikistan and Kazakhstan. She took her first trip to Uzbekistan when she was on her first assignment to the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. And when she returned to the Soviet Union in the mid-1980s, she was appointed by President George W. Bush as ambassador to Turkmenistan 
and served as ambassador from 2001 to 2003. Later, President Obama appointed her the U.S. Permanent Representative to the Conference on Disarmament in Geneva from 2010 to 2013, where she was instrumental in negotiating a protocol to the Central Asian Nuclear Weapons Free Zone. Although Ambassador Kennedy retired uh, young from the Foreign Service in 2015, she's still very active in Central Asia. And in fact, in May of this year, she accompanied a New York Times tour to the region. And she plans to continue to return to the area and watch its progress in the coming years. So I want you to give a, a warm welcome to His Excellency uh, Ambassador Jean-Van Vakabov and Ambassador Laura Kennedy. Oh, well, now, uh, we, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to have a, a few words from the ambassadors, and then we're going to show a video. And then we're going to have the exchange with Ambassador Kennedy and the ambassador. So uh, we'll have a video that will go seven, eight minutes or so showing you what's happening in Uzbekistan. So, uh, Ambassador, please. So dear Congressman Moran, Ambassador Kennedy, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And uh, I would like to extend my deepest and sincere gratitude to the leadership of the World Affairs Council, uh, both of you to all members of the Council for the opportunity to <coughs> address such a distinguished gathering today. And uh, indeed, it's a great honor and privilege to be uh, here. So, uh, dear guests, uh, as you may know, <coughs> uh, a couple months ago, uh, uh, we uh, participated uh, at the uh, embassy series and uh, hosted the event uh, led by the World uh, <coughs> Affairs uh, Council uh, in our diplomatic mission uh, here in DC, and I had the and I had the pleasure of addressing um, the audience and speaking more about new Uzbekistan and uh, <coughs> about those uh, comprehensive reforms that are continuing nowadays in, in my country. And today I would like to inform you that since uh, the last meeting we held in our embassy, <coughs> Central, Central Asia and Caucasus Institute, led by Dr. Frederick Starr, whom you know well, and his assistant, Svante Cornell, published very promising book titled Uzbekistan's New Face. I would say that <clears throat> this book is a comprehensive material um, <clears throat> that um, <clears throat> documents uh, all uh, current uh, reforms um, occurring in, uh, in Uzbekistan. And uh, uh, this is the first uh, work uh, published abroad, I mean in the West. Uh, it was prepared both by American and European scholars, experts. And uh, in my understanding, this book the main, uh, the main goal of this book is to fill the vacuum of qualitative information about the transformation uh, of uh, where Uzbekistan and the whole entire region is, are, are going through nowadays. And by the way, this book is available at Amazon, and I encourage all of you to have one more 
And as uh, Dr. Starr uh, strongly advised, one more for your mother-in-law. So, uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, indeed, with the election of a new president, uh, <clears throat> a program of massive reform has been launched in our country. Uh, a newly elected president, Mirziyoyev, jolted the entire system by declaring that <clears throat> that it is right time to end the period when Uzbek people worked for the government. And instead, the government must start working for our ordinary people, serving for the sake of their interests. And these ongoing moves <clears throat> put all Uzbek officials at all level of our government on notice that the new administration is very serious about its pledge to make the government accountable to our people. We instituted reforms that are ambitious in aim and <clears throat> extensive in scope. The current reforms are all organized around solid commitment to the rule of law, to the rights of people, to elective governance, to an open market economy, to religious tolerance, to cordial relations with huge, with huge powers, of course, without sacrificing our sovereignty, and a new embrace of, of the Central Asian region itself as an actor on the world stage. And among them, among those huge powers is the United States, the first country, one of the first to recognize Uzbekistan's independence in 1991. And since then, we enjoyed enduring US support of uh, for our independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. Promoting cooperation with the United States uh, is uh, defined as a key, as a top priority of Uzbekistan's foreign policy. Our relations have multifaceted, long-term, and multidimensional nature. Uzbekistan and the United States enjoy similar stands on a number of international and regional issues, to include the problem of Afghanistan, as well as countering global threats and challenges such as terrorism and extremism, drug trafficking, uh, weapon of mass destruction, pr uh, proliferation, and etc. So, and the fundamental docu document of the Uzbek-American relations, uh, which has predetermined the nature of our cooperation, is the Declaration on Strategic Partnerships that was signed by the leaders uh, of both uh, countries in 2002. <clears throat> and within the last two years, we've made a great progress in terms of expanding our bilateral relationship in, in practically in all areas, trade and investment, political issues, people-to-people -people ties. And namely, for the first time in our history, for the first time in the last 16 years, we organized an, uh, an official working visit of a newly elected president, Merziyov, to the United States. During the visit, uh, <clears throat> both uh, Uzbekistan, along with leading American uh, companies, signed more than 20 major business contracts, agreements worth almost 5 billion US dollars contracts that create more than 10,000 jobs here in the United States. 
and open opportunities for billions of dollars in future US uh, contracts. We started attracting direct investments for the first time, direct inf investments uh, from the United States. And very soon, in a couple of weeks, uh, <clears throat> Uzbekistan, Tashkent will welcome uh, one of the key members of the current cabinet, uh, Honorable Secretary Wilbur Ross, who will uh, take part in the Uzbek American Business Forum, led by American Uzbekistan Chamber of Commerce. So besides that, uh, uh, another achievement we've gained within last uh, one year, for the first time in our history, we've established, we've established it in the house, the caucus on Uzbekistan, which includes almost 10 representatives, both of the Republican and Democratic Party. Moreover, Webster, a leading American university, has become a key partner of Uzbekistan, a partner that opened up its uh, branch in Tashkent just recently in September. And uh, this educational institution became the first ever American university ever existed in not only in Uzbekistan, but in, in the region of uh, Central Asia. Beside that, we have registered first US NGO, namely American Councils for International Education since 2004. And first, American news outlets, American uh, Voice of America and EurasianNet.org. We have received recognition of our efforts in ensuring human rights to include labor rights, trafficking in persons, providing religious freedoms, to name a few. We actively work together with the United States under the uh, framework of regional cooperation format C5 plus one. The United States uh, supported our president's good neighborhood policy and policy of openness towards our Central Asian neighbors, including Afghanistan. By the way, <clears throat> after launching this uh, good neighborhood policy, we started considering Afghanistan as an, inter as an integral part of Central Asia. And a new president, without any exaggeration, I would say, broke the dam. Began an age of dramatic and very positive changes in the region. He immediately lifted all bans on intra-regional transport and trade. Resolved decades old disputes over territorial claims. We have important quantitative uh, indicators. Number of contacts between the heads of Central Asian uh, countries increased. Trade, uh, trade grows, we are observing trade growth. The implementation of major joint project, uh, projects in the field of transport and the industry. In, the, in addition, the level of political, political confidence between countries is gradually growing up. And here I would literally say that we began to talk more about things that unite us. And by the way, not only in terms of our common historical and civilizational heritage, we began to recognize the existence of common interests. We began to understand more the need to find compromise in order to solve our very acute regional problems and challenges. We began noticeably less to share our common interests, common history, sorry, less to focus on disagreements. So <clears throat> let me stop here and uh, draw your attention at the screen where 
very short video uh, is supposed to be demonstrated, video that will tell us about Tashkent's current regional policy. And later, I expect Ambassador Kennedy will follow up with questions on specifics, and I will be at your disposal and ready to answer your questions. Thank you so much. The President of Uzbekistan, Safkat Mirziyoyev, defined Central Asia as the key priority of Uzbekistan's foreign policy. The choice of Central Asia as a priority is a natural, sincere desire of Uzbekistan to establish good neighborhoods, friendly and mutually beneficial relations with its closest neighbors. Tashkent clearly realizes that the solution of a number of issues to ensure sustainable development and security of Uzbekistan largely depends on the level of a mutual understanding between the countries of Central Asia and the effectiveness of regional cooperation. Uzbekistan has been and remains a firm supporter of an open, benevolent and pragmatic policy towards all its neighbours. Tashkent is open to a constructive dialogue, searching for solutions on the basis of reasonable compromises to even the most acute problems. It was Central Asia that became the main topic of the first speech by the President of Uzbekistan, Shafkat Mirziyoyev, at the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly. The leads of Uzbekistan initiated to hold regular consultative meetings among the heads of Central Asian states. The idea of creating a regional cooperation mechanism was a significant step in further development and strengthening cooperation in Central Asia. Joint discussions and elaboration of ways to solve urgent regional problems are the guarantee of increasing economic potential of Central Asia and welfare of the population, ensuring stability and sustainable development in the region. Over the past year, Shavkat Mirziyoyev had 16 meetings with the leaders of the region's states, paid three state and two working visits to the countries of Central Asia and made 17 telephone conversations with the heads of neighboring states. As a result, the president of Uzbekistan managed to establish direct and productive contracts with all the leaders of the Central Asian states without exception, raised the level of political trust in a region to a fundamentally new level, significantly reduced the previous tension in the relations between the states of Central Asia. Visits of the head of Uzbekistan to Turkmenistan opened a new page of cooperation, solid package of documents including the Treaty on Strategic Partnership and on all areas of cooperation was signed. Presidents opened the rail and automobile bridges across the Amudarya, which are an important section of the transport communication route Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Iran, Oman. An agreement on using the ports of Turkmenistan on the Caspian Sea to enter the markets of Europe and the Caucasus has been reached. Meetings of the heads of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan have become unprecedented in their results. Joint declaration on further deepening of strategic partnership and strengthening of good neighborliness, the roadmap for all areas of joint activities, the strategy for economic cooperation and agreements on the implementation of joint economic projects have been adopted. For the first time in the history of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, business forums were held, which resulted in the conclusion of trade contracts and investment agreements totaling about $1.2 billion. An increase in trade turnover from $2 billion to $5 billion is planned. The state visit of the President of Uzbekistan, Shavkat Mirziyoyev, to Kyrgyzstan has become truly historic, radically changed the bilateral relations between Tashkent and Bishkek. Thanks to political will of both parties, the treaty on the state border between Tashkent and Bishkek was signed for the first time in 26 years. The parties agreed on delimiting more than 80% of the border, which was a real breakthrough in resolving problematic issues between two countries. An important achievement was also the promotion of contracts between ordinary citizens. The work of a number of checkpoints have been resumed, which became real celebration to both nations. After the opening of Duslik checkpoint, which was closed since 2010, more than 5,000 people crossed Uzbek-Kyrgyz border in just one day. Moreover, during the state visit of Almazbek Atambayev to Uzbekistan, declaration on strategic partnership, strengthening of friendship, good neighborliness and trust between the two countries was signed. President of Uzbekistan, Shafkat Mirziyoyev, also held a productive and fruitful meeting with the leader of Tajikistan, Imam Ali Rahman, in the framework of the Arab-Islamic American Summit in Riyadh. The heads of states discussed the development of the political dialogue and expansion of social and economic relations, exchanged views on further cooperation. 
the active regional coast of Uzbekistan to rapprochement with all the Central Asian states without exception and the intensification of the political dialogue at the highest level gave a powerful impetus to the development of all-round cooperation from economy and transport to cultural humanitarian ties. Intergovernmental commissions of Uzbekistan with Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan and Tajikistan has been intensified. Exchange of delegation of business circles, holding joint business forums and fairs became regular. The joint Uzbekistan-Kazakhstan serial production of the Raven Nexia R3 model in Kazakhstan's Kostanay was launched. As a result, the trade turnover of Uzbekistan with the countries of Central Asia in the first half of 2017 increased by 13%. The volume of mutual trade between Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan increased by 69%, with Tajikistan 22%, Kazakhstan 11%. Since early 2017, high-speed rail service has been established between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. For the first time in 25 years, flights between Tashkent and Dushanbe were resumed. The flights between Tashkent and Issykul region of Kyrgyzstan were launched. The passage through the section of the M39 highway between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan was opened. A new level of political trust in a region gave a powerful impetus to the development of institutions of people's diplomacy, cultural and humanitarian ties, expansion of contracts between ordinary citizens of our countries. A significant contribution to strengthening the historically developed friendly and good neighborhood relations between the Uzbek and Kyrgyz people was material and technical assistance to the Osh State Academic Uzbek Music and Drama Theatre named after the war, together with the construction of a new school in Kyrgyzstan's southern city of Osh with the financial participation of Uzbekistan. Friendship visits of the delegations of Kazakhstan to Tashkent and Samarkand, as well as meetings of representatives of the border regions of Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan were bright and meaningful. Organized for the first time in 20 years, large-scale celebration of days of Uzbek culture in Tajikistan and days of Tajik culture in Uzbekistan have become a clear demonstration of truly fraternal relations between the two nations. The practical results achieved recently by Uzbekistan's foreign policy make it possible to state with confidence that the Central Asian coast of Tashkent has become a timely and effective response to the long overdue request for regional rapprochement, the restoration of trust and mutual understanding, and the prompt resolution of the accumulated problematic issues. Of course, we're all just at the beginning of the road. There is still a lot of joint work ahead for the common prosperity and sustainable development, the peaceful and successful future of our children. It is important not to stop at what has been achieved, but to move forward together. Well, um, Ambassador, uh, let me first um, uh, offer my own personal congratulations on your 27th uh, year of independence, which you celebrated in grand style just last week. Um, and uh, let me thank you as well for that video, which may have seemed you know, routine if you don't know Central Asia, but for somebody who has followed the area for some years, to me, it captures the extraordinary changes that have taken place over the last year or so, because I remember the periods when there were closed borders, when there were threats and insults being hurled uh, across borders. So I think, again, this is something that uh, President Mirzioyev has really transformed in short order. Um, and if I might, maybe I'll, I'll uh, when I think about the reforms, um, ask about what were the seeds of this reform? I mean, it seems to be, many commentators have said this is reform driven from above, and your president has indeed uh, launched a wide-ranging, extensive series of reforms. What were the seeds of this? I mean, he was prime minister for 13 years. Is this, had he been thinking about this all these years and just biding his time? Was it his new perspective gained when he became president that gave him a new appreciation of what needed to be done? So if you could address that, I'd, I'd be very interested. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, once again, <clears throat> uh, for the opportunity to address to this distinguished audience. So answering your uh, <clears throat> question, I would say uh, that primarily that uh, there was a demand uh, that came from the bottom. Uh, demand uh, by people, by ordinary people. As you mentioned, um, uh, President, current President Mirzioyev, having served um, as a prime minister for more than 13 years, was 
deeply engaged in all issues, in all domestic issues. He knew well where the bodies are. So uh, in, in this regard, <coughs> uh, right after the first president, uh, Karimov, uh, passed away, um, and before the election, uh, he put forward uh, the idea. Uh, he uh, decided to open up, to set up so-called virtual uh, receptions, where everyone across the country uh, had the opportunity to directly address its own complaints addressed to the president's office, personal to himself. And uh, within two, three month, months, he ordered his uh, administration to collect all those complaints in order to, um, to uh, set the sickness to set up uh, <coughs> uh, why, uh, why uh, so many people, so many Uzbek people, uh, complaints for those who represent healthcare, for those who represent education, educational institutions, uh, for those who represent even law enforcement agencies. And after gathering all those complaints, so he came to a firm conclusion what a new government should do at that moment. And he uh, defined the therapy, therapy how to heal, uh, heal the country, how to heal uh, the ordinary Uzbek people. And later he uh, <coughs> declared his own um, five-year strategy of action. Strategy of action that uh, consists uh, of five key pillars. Uh, pillars that uh, today I have all mentioned, and once again I would like to highlight them. Uh, the first one is ensuring the rule of law. The, um, the second is uh, bringing good governance, administrative reforms. The third is liberalizing of our national economy. The, th the fourth uh, part of the strategy includes social sector, mainly focusing on healthcare and education. And the fifth, of course, our foreign policy. Policy, namely, good neighborhood uh, policies that he launched right after coming to power. So, um, and this uh, strategy is still in progress. We, um, we made some progress, we made, uh, we uh, brought some achievements uh, with regard to uh, implementing the, that uh, strategy covering all areas. And within those two years, uh, we made a great step, even in terms of uh, improving uh, Uzbeks and perception abroad. Just one example uh, that I would like to share with you is related to the World Bank's annual report doing business. A couple years ago, uh, we were placed at uh, 174th uh, position. And within these uh, two years, we've jumped uh, to the 74th place. And now Uzbekistan is uh, being considered uh, as a state with a growing uh, economy. And uh, we've been included in two top five uh, countries in the world. So that was just the fir uh, first step. Beside that, <coughs> uh, those achievements related to ensuring human rights in the country. Uh, a new, a newly elected president released uh, almost 3,000 people 
who were charged with uh, such crimes as religious extremism and terrorism in the past. Now they are free. Mm, the vast majority of them uh, has been employed. And now uh, they are working uh, with their partners, with their, they are living with their relatives, and they came back to a healthy society, as our president uh, promised. So uh, in this regard, I would say that um, uh, Uzbekistan is, is committed, is committed uh, to ensuring um, uh, human rights, uh, and uh, as president himself uh, pointed out at several times, these uh, ongoing reforms are irreversible. And uh, there's only one way, and this way is ahead. Okay, well, thank you. Um, you had in your initial remarks uh, touched on the issue of terrorism and extremism. Um, and so I wanted to ask you about, um, uh, as a country which has indeed experienced attacks by terrorist organizations like the IMU and so on, uh, how does the president uh, see this challenge? How does he balance the need to keep the country secure and, and uh, uh, ensure that it doesn't uh, 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 at the same time violate hum human rights? As, I mean, since uh, critics had, had cert certainly accused President Karimov of uh, uh, being far too harsh and so on. I mean, you've already touched on that in your remarks right now, but I just, any, any further thoughts on how uh, the president uh, sees the challenge of terrorism and how best one would handle it. Uh, so, um, as you may know, as you all know, Uzbekistan shares common border with Afghanistan. And, uh, and this uh, country is challenging in terms of uh, those threats you've mentioned. Um, but at the same time, we um, started uh, cooperating with Afghanistan from the scratch. Uh, within the last 10, 12 years, the leader of Afghanistan paid an official visit to Uzbekistan uh, last December. We <coughs> signed dozens of uh, agreements. Uh, on transport, on trade, on education, on people-to-people -people ties, and many, many mutual beneficial fields of our joint uh, cooperation. Um, by the way, uh, uh, the president himself um, uh, put forward the idea to set up uh, direct flights between Tashkent and Kabul. So we are literally opening up towards our, clo our uh, closest neighbors. But at the same time, uh, we uh, bear in mind that um, Uzbekistan, as many countries in the world, is not guaranteed from, this threat, from the threat of terrorism and extremism. But at the same time, uh, the, uh, the president himself um, considered that, um, that we have to Counter the uh, counter with the with the roots uh, of uh, those threats, not with the uh, with, with with terrorism or extremism itself, with the roots, uh, taking into account uh, uh, those young people who are uh, being educated abroad, are being educated inside the country, and he sees that the, 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 the he sees that um, there's only uh, one way to combat against uh, international terrorism and extremism. And this way is, is, is uh, uh, through uh, education. And in this regard, uh, the uh, so, um, newly elected president uh, put forward uh, several initiatives uh, regarding, uh, regarding uh, setting up new educational institutions in Uzbekistan, I mean Islamic educational institutions. One of them uh, is supposed uh, to be uh, established very soon, hopefully this year, the, the um, Islamic center, the Islamic center that will be located in Tashkent. Another center is uh, called uh, the uh, 
the research uh, uh, center named after our great ancestor Bukhari that will be located in Samarkand. Beside that, uh, we've uh, created uh, Islamic Academy uh, in, in, in Tashkent uh, based uh, on, uh, on, on, on the uh, Islamic universities that uh, was operating in the past. So, uh, and we proceed from uh, the understanding that all those three educational institutions should, uh, must foster uh, our young generation in a proper way. And, uh, and, th and, and, and we see uh, and uh, we uh, understand that only this way um, is the only way uh, to counter those uh, threats we are facing nowadays. Thank you. Now, Congressman Moran, uh, I think, uh, indicated you've been here as ambassador uh, less than a year. Uh, so if I might, um, how do you see uh, uh, the job um, uh, at this point? Um, it's your first ambassadorship, and I think most people would say that Washington is one of the toughest uh, uh, capitals around to do business in. So what, what's, what's your, your thoughts at this point? Um, what do you like? What do you don't like? What are the challenges? What are the opportunities? I have to confess that today uh, I celebrate one year in my position. Mm. And uh, frankly speaking, <clears throat> um, when my tenure uh, has been started uh, one year ago, so uh, the main challenge, the main challenge I faced at that time, was uh, was a lack of uh, experience. I mean, working abroad. Uh, as, as me, uh, as you might know, Ambassador, I've started working at the Minister of Foreign Affairs in two thousand one, and uh, served for more than sixteen years. Uh, both at the Minister of Foreign Affairs, later I moved to NSC and again came back to the Foreign Ministry, but never, never worked abroad. And in this uh, extent, um, I would say that at that time that uh, there was only one challenge. Uh, the challenge that uh, relates uh, to uh, my background. But thanks to, <clears throat> uh, thanks to my team, my uh, members of my staff uh, who were uh, together with me uh, at the beginning, thanks to my, our American partners, friends, and all those who are uh, interested in Uzbekistan, and all of them helped me to, to uh, be more engaged in Uzbek-American relationship. Another challenge uh, I have to uh, also confess, uh, when uh, my nominee uh, uh, had been uh, uh, approved by the Senate, I I clearly remember I took the floor and uh, promised 100 members of the Uzbek Senate that my uh, key mission at that time uh, uh, was to arrange the first ever official working visit of my president to the United States. And uh, right after six or seven months passed, we've reached, we've reached this very ambitious goal and uh, our president uh, paid an, wish, uh, an official working visit to the United States, and he was warmly welcomed by all Americans, warmly received uh, at the White House, um, on the Hill, and, uh, uh, and even uh, my president was the first uh, foreign leader who was uh, received by a newly appointed Secretary of State, Pompeo. And we are really proud of that, and, um, 
and all those, I think, all those uh, challenges now remain in the past. And uh, we, I mean, um, me uh, as an ambassador and all members of my staff are really proud of having uh, such uh, very tangible outcomes of my one year tenure as an ambassador. Okay, well, you certainly have had an extraordinary first year. I mean, a, a, we all know uh, a presidential visit is not easy to, to carry off. And uh, I'll also, I wanted to agree that you do indeed, um, you're heading a great mission here. Um, and, uh, and, and your team in New York. Uh, uh, so we're delighted that Uzbekistan is sending its best to Washington. And I'll just end by saying that I'm happy to say that uh, uh, we're getting ready to send a new ambassador to Uzbekistan and we are reciprocating and sending our best, uh, continue to send our best uh, to Tashkent. So uh, I know uh, that uh, folks in the audience um, would like to ask questions. So uh, I could go on all night, but um, uh, let me um, see uh, who's got a question, um, and um, uh, I think there's mics for you. There, oh, there's mics over there if you want, um, uh, and then uh, do I see Congressman Moran with his hands? I'll, I'll, I'll invite you to ask the first question then, sir. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, one's an uh, element of progress, Mr. Ambassador, that you uh, didn't necessarily uh, explain. One of the issues that Thank you, Stephanie. One of the issues that the United States and, and some in Europe have had with Uzbek I, I guess I should stand with uh, Uzbekistan's economy is the use of child labor in picking uh, the cotton. And uh, it, it was kind of traditional, uh, but it, uh, it was felt it was, a, it was an issue that needed to be addressed. Uh, and the international labor organization and so on had made quite uh, quite an issue of it. Uh, I understand that substantial progress has been made in that area, and uh, Uzbekistan really hasn't taken credit for it, but one of the biggest problems that had been raised has been dealt with in a, in a very constructive fashion. So perhaps you could address that. Uh, the progress that has been made in terms of child labor, working in the fields and cotton and so on. Um, thank you. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, I would like to inform you that, uh, that the child labor, the issue for um, the issue um, is that we were uh, criticized for many years so is no longer the issue and it was uh, recognized uh, both by international organizations such as the World Bank, um, International Labor Organization and many many others and uh, what's important uh, by the United States government as well and uh, <coughs> uh, the progress we've made within one and a half uh, year, right after a new president came to power, um, was, uh, uh, I should say that it was a very difficult task, very hard task for us. Um, it's not a secret that uh, we used the child lab in the past. Everyone knows about that, uh, and uh, and uh, that was the main reason why uh, why our national textile manufacturers are still suffering from. But at the same time, um, I have uh, to inform you also that um, another achievement that uh, Uzbek diplomacy here in DC gained within one year is that that Uzbekistan, uh, that Uzbekistan's position according to the uh, uh, Department of State's uh, annual uh, report uh, trafficking in person, persons. So my country, our country was upgraded. Upgraded and moved from the third place to the second. And uh, we firmly believe uh, that our next step is to 
remove from that list, uh, is to remove Uzbekistan from that list. Uh, another point uh, that I would like to um, share with you also is that the Uzbekistan government is committed to eliminate not only the uh, child labor itself, but all risks related to forced labor. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we have to confess uh, that there are some challenges at local levels. So as our Minister of Justice just recently pointed out that Uzbekistan has excellent laws. But the problem we are facing is related, is mostly related to implementing of those laws and primarily at local level. And uh, uh, in this regard, um, uh, as I mentioned during my uh, uh, welcoming remarks, so uh, for the first time in our history, we are attracting uh, direct investment from the United States. And the total sum of the, those uh, investments worth uh, almost $1.6 billion. And uh, 400, yes, 400, almost four, Hundred million dollars uh, is related to uh, creating agro-cluster system uh, in Uzbekistan with the help of our American partners, and those uh, uh, business, uh, th those representatives of uh, business entity, by the way, based in Memphis, Tennessee, the first sta state that. Um, uh, I visited uh, right after my <coughs> appointment uh, and uh, after uh, presenting my credentials uh, at the White House. And uh, I found them and uh, persuaded them to uh, invest in Uzbekistan and they believed me and they agreed uh, to work with uh, Uzbekistan. So, uh, so the main message that I wanted to deliver to you is is, uh, is the willingness uh, of uh, those, our American partners, to, <coughs> to create something very similar to um, uh, American fields, to American agricultural uh, sphere here. Something very similar to American cotton industry uh, <coughs> uh, advantages. And, um, the key point is to mechanize the entire process of cotton picking, uh, uh, cotton picking process in Uzbekistan by, uh, by purchasing uh, very famous tractors assembled by John Deere and many, many uh, John, John Deere, Echo, uh, CN Danger, and many, many others. So we uh, want. Um, that business, that business entity from Tennessee, to help us uh, to raise our cotton industry to a new level, and uh, our um, ambitious goal is to eradicate both the child labor and uh, forced labor in Uzbekistan in the near future. That's our goal. Thank you. Uh, I'm delighted uh, uh, to hear you say that uh, you're looking at American uh, machinery, and as they say, nothing runs like a deer. So, um, uh, but but um, I neglected to say to please, if you have a question, come to the microphone. Um, and uh, if I could ask you please to state your name, any affiliation you wish to, and uh, ask a nice, crisp uh, uh, question. Thank you. Sure. I should probably lift this up a little bit. I'm quite tall. I'm Taylor Michelle. I work for, for a chief executives organization. I'm actually heading to Uzbekistan on Tuesday um, for a site visit. I'm planning an event in Uzbekistan in 2020. I'm curious if you and the government are working on anything to invite and promote tourism in Uzbekistan. So uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, to Uzbekistan. Uh, very right uh, choice, uh, and you have to be there. And uh, I call all of you uh, to travel uh, Uzbekistan once. Ambassador Kennedy, who worked for many years in the region, 
uh, namely in Turkmenistan, and uh, the, as a person who just recently came back from Uzbekistan, she uh, led uh, the New York Times uh, journey uh, that uh, included uh, more than 20, yeah, more than 20 people here from the from the United States. And um, if you don't believe me, you may ask uh, her. So, uh, what uh, the government of Uzbekistan uh, has also made in terms of attracting uh, tourism? Here, uh, I would, uh, I should uh, say that uh, today all Uzbek embassies serving abroad are obliged to <coughs> carry out uh, one of the most important, one of the key tasks, tasks that is related to uh, tourism. So, uh, for instance, uh, the Uzbek embassy serving here in DC is obliged to uh, send, by the end of this year, almost, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken more than 10,000 Americans to Uzbekistan. And within uh, last um, 10 months, we have all the sent 8,000. Uh, and thanks to uh, those beginnings, thanks to uh, those uh, endeavors uh, led uh, by, the, by, by the new uh, government. Um, the first step we made, we literally opened all gates <clears throat> in uh, July 15th, uh, we've introduced a visa-free regime for citizens of um, uh, 101 countries, mostly for uh, transit passengers. So if you, if you once decide to travel, uh, for instance, to China and uh, decide to stop in Tashkent, so you may uh, enter the country without any visa requirements and stay uh, in Uzbekistan within five uh, days. Um, another uh, achievement we've um, introduced to foreigners also related to visa requirements. So uh, starting from July 15th, we've uh, introduced uh, electronic visa. So everyone who uh, wish uh, to visit Uzbekistan may uh, submit uh, application um, online and uh, get uh, the visa just within one or two days. Very simple. With, uh, uh, by the way, uh, another important issue related to costs. So if, uh, if you spent in the past um, $160 to get Uzbek visa. So now, uh, if you use uh, e-visa, I mean, uh, online, uh, you may get it just within $20. Mm. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, beside mm -hmm. that, um, uh, just look at the, uh, at the numbers. Last year, we were hosting almost 2.5 million foreigners in Uzbekistan. Mm. And uh, our government now uh, uh, requires to double that number. So, uh, and all, as I mentioned, all Uzbek embassies are deeply engaged in attracting those foreigners to Uzbekistan. And hopefully by the end of this year, we'll uh, reach this ambitious goal. Good evening, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, my name is James Michael. I'm a former diplomat, and now I do consulting in good governance and the rule of law. So I'm very interested in those two pillars of the development strategy that uh, your government has adopted. But from what I have read, uh, you have undertaken a very broad range of reforms and it deals with many organizations in government, in education, at the regional level, uh, dealing with the, 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 the lawyers and the defense bar and so forth. 
And I just wonder, the, the breadth of this uh, makes this an enormous undertaking. I wonder if you could uh, share with us some thoughts about how is it going and what are your uh, things that you see making the greatest progress and what are the challenges that you're encountering with implementing uh, this very ambitious uh, uh, strategy? Thank you. So thank you uh, <coughs> uh, for the uh, question. Uh, so if I speak turn by turn about those pillars I've mentioned, uh, ensuring a good governance. <coughs> um, just uh, one uh, example that uh, I would like to share with you. So, as I mentioned, uh, one of the uh, great, one of the great steps we've made uh, in terms of implementing that uh, key uh, task. So we uh, we've totally changed changed uh, the um, structure of our government. We've um, terminated the activity of dozens of uh, governmental agencies uh, and ministries uh, that um, were very passive in the past and uh, just there was no demand for, by the people and uh, they were serving just uh, as a tool of bureaucracy. But at the same time, uh, uh, we, <coughs> uh, we created uh, uh, other uh, very um, uh, necessary for our ordinary people, uh, governmental agencies, for instance, uh, at this moment, we have three uh, uh, ministries, three uh, governmental bodies that are dealing with education only. And one of them is dealing with higher education. The second is dealing with public education that covers uh, the, first uh, the first grade up to the, uh, 12th uh, grade. And a new ministry we've just created uh, one year ago uh, is dealing with uh, pre-K issues. So that's the main uh, requirement, that's the main task that we are pursuing, that's the main goal that we are pursuing by uh, making uh, education itself uh, open for the public. And uh, by the way, we uh, we uh, expand uh, almost more, more than 35% uh, percent of our GDP, namely to social sector. Uh, two and three percent of our uh, two and three percent of our GDP uh, is um, uh, annually allocated to, namely, education itself. So the rule of law, human rights uh, issues. Uh, are uh, emerging as a key uh, challenge uh, for uh, Uzbekistan. As I mentioned, um, right after taking his office, President himself um, uh, decided to use for the first time, for the first time uh, in our history, uh, use uh, the uh, authority uh, that our constitution provides him, the authority to pardon to pardon our ordinary, our people. And according to uh, our constitution, he pardoned, as I mentioned, uh, almost 3,000 people who were jailed uh, in the past. Moreover, we, I mean, the government of Uzbekistan uh, delisted, delisted more than 20,000 uh, of Uzbek people from so-called blacklists that, uh, inc that uh, include included um, those who were charged with religious extremism and terrorism. And um, another point, the third pillar that I mentioned uh, is related to uh, liberalizing of our national economy. So as you might know, um, the main barrier, the main obstacle uh, for um, raising 
our national economy was the absence of uh, of the uh, convertibility of our national currency. So starting from uh, September 2017, uh, we uh, made our national currency, Uzbek Sum, convertible. So starting from that period, both individuals and uh, business entities are free to purchase and sell foreign currency. And uh, <coughs> by, by this means, so we lifted the main uh, ban, f main ban that uh, hindered for many years uh, uh, foreign uh, investments to Uzbekistan. Now, uh, Uzbekistan itself is an emerging market, uh, is uh, becoming an attractive place to invest. Uh, ju just a few uh, numbers that I would like to share with you. So within those uh, two, uh, with those two years, we've attracted almost seven billion direct investments to Uzbekistan. And we have also utilized the vast majority of them and uh, hopefully by the end of this year we'll uh, absorb all uh, those uh, uh, investments. So, uh, um, uh, religious tolerance also is defined as a key uh, pillar of uh, our five years strategy of action. Uh, uh, probably you've heard, I'm not sure, um, um, in July, uh, the Department of State uh, was um, hosting um, the uh, Ministerial to Advance Religious Freedom uh, in the world. And Uzbekistan was uh, only a country that was invited by the, uh, by the sector himself, personally, to attend this ministerial. Despite Uzbekistan is still being listed uh, in CPC, countries of particular concern, uh, countries that are uh, being blamed in, <coughs> uh, in uh, religious uh, freedoms abusing issues. So, uh, I would say that a newly appointed ambassador at large uh, on religious freedom, uh, honorable um, uh, former senator Brownback uh, paid an official working visit to Uzbekistan. Uh, and uh, he uh, was warmly received by the president and uh, he recognized the great progress we've made uh, within these last uh, two years. And uh, here I would like to uh, confess that our ambitious goal is to remove Uzbekistan from CPC by the end of this year. Z uh, these are key achievements we've gained uh, within the last two years in terms of implementing that strategy. Thank you, um, sir. And I think um, we're already um, over time, so I think you're going to get the, uh, the last question. And thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Jordan Lakin from the Open World Leadership Center. Uh, my question is, what role did uh, foreign governments play in Uzbekistan's development, uh, specifically China, Russia, and the United States? And uh, as a quick follow-up, how do Uzbeks feel about that involvement? Very acute question. Uh, so, <clears throat> All those countries you've mentioned are um, defined as a key partners of Uzbekistan according to our um, uh, according to the uh, concept of foreign policy of Uzbekistan. So, uh, starting from uh, from Russia. Uh, so, as uh, as you may know, Russia is is uh, is our key trade partner. The annual uh, uh, volume of uh, trade turnover uh, is about 3.6 or 3.6 billion dollars. Uh, Russia is the successor of the Soviet Union, uh, the state that um, 
run for more than 70 years, run Uzbekistan for more than 70 years. So uh, I want to say that uh, we are connected by history. Uh, more, uh, almost three million Uzbek migrants live in, and work in Russia. And Russia itself uh, is, uh, is considered a huge market where uh, Uzbek entrepreneurs promote their own goods. And not only a huge market, the closest market to our country. So, uh, moreover, um, next week, uh, the president of Russia will pay a state visit to Uzbekistan. And uh, we expect that, uh, that numerous uh, business contracts uh, uh, will be uh, signed during that uh, visit. So, we are very pragmatic uh, in terms of uh, boosting our partnership with Russia. And uh, as you may know, uh, in 2004, we've established a strategic partnership uh, with the Russian Federation. And uh, later, uh, we've upgraded it up uh, to a key ally. Uh, Besides that, we, <coughs> uh, we are the members of uh, several regional and national organizations as uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, as, uh, and even the United Nations and many, many others. So China itself. Although we do not share common border, but we feel that China is not far from Uzbekistan. And uh, uh, in 2016, China became uh, uh, number one trade partner of Uzbekistan, and they have uh, and the total uh, volume of uh, annual trade turnover increases uh, by almost five billion uh, dollars. Besides that, uh, we uh, Uzbekistan was. Uh, with the first among others is that uh, fully endorsed the uh, uh, Beijing's uh, initiative One Road, One Belt. And we are interested in, in implementing this uh, initiative uh, that is uh, aimed at even uh, Central Asia. One of the key part of uh, that uh, concept, I mean, one, uh, one Belt, One Road, is related to the railways that we have all just started implementing with neighboring Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and uh, uh, we proceed from, uh, from that understanding that uh, that railway that comes from the uh, western part of China and uh, enters uh, Kyrgyzstan and later will be connected to Uzbekistan, uh, Uzbekistan's railway. So we will um, uh, so we will have opportunity to uh, connect that uh, that railway with a thousand part of Uzbekistan. And uh, I mean thousand part. Uh, I mean uh, first of all Afghanistan. We have all the constructed. Uh, uh, 100 kilometers uh, of railway that goes from the south of Uzbekistan and, and uh, connects to Mazari Sharif. So our next ambitious goal is uh, to uh, build, to construct uh, the railway that will go um, uh, from Mazar, Mazar Sharif and uh, will be connected to Herat. So our ambitious, our next goal is uh, to make Uzbekistan closer to seaports that are located both in Iran and uh, Pakistan. So, and, uh, and if we if we reach this ambitious goal, uh, so we we, uh, we would be able to to unlock uh, Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan that uh, is still considered as a double locked country at this moment. So, uh, what concerns the United States, uh, I today I. Uh, told a lot about that. Uh, so, again, um, uh, we uh, <coughs> uh, 
uh, proceed from understanding that uh, that uh, peaceful uh, uh, peaceful ties between those huge powers and um, uh, pragmatic way of uh, further cooperation among them uh, will meet our uh, own interests in terms of, again, uh, attracting those investments to the region, in terms of uh, boosting good uh, neighborhood relationship with uh, both Russia and China and, of course, with the United States. Okay, well, thank you. Um, you've been very generous with uh, your time tonight, Mr. Ambassador. Um, I could have gone on asking questions all night, but time is always uh, uh, short. So I would just uh, uh, conclude with one thing to, to the audience, and that is um, go see for yourself uh, the changes that are going on in this extraordinarily dynamic country at the heart of Central Asia. Take advantage of those $20 visas, um, and you won't be disappointed. So thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, for sharing your, your thoughts with us tonight.